Hello everyone, welcome back to the online sessions of the material science and metallurgy. Myself Vivek Parikh. Today we will be starting with our new unit that is known as a metallic material. So let us begin this thing with the known as a metallic material and starting with the first thing that is the introduction of this unit that is also known as a metallography. The another name of that particular metallic material that is also known as a metallography. So now let us begin this unit by knowing certain definitions about this particular thing that is metallography. What do you mean by metallography? Now metallography it is the consisting of the microscopic study of the structures of the metal or an alloy. That means we will be going for the study of that particular structure of any of the metals and alloy. How we can study it? We have two options for that particular thing. For studying the structure, we have two options. That is a micro and a macro. What is this micro macro? We will be discussing in today's lecture. Now, why? What is the use of this study of this particular thing? Because as in the earlier units, we have studied that properties, they are directly dependent on the structure. And due to that thing, we have to study this particular structure. So by studying the structure, we will be knowing the properties and from properties, the performance of the material is known. So that's why to study the different types of the structure, it is very important. So for that particular thing, this metallography works. So now let us see what are the things or which are the different types of the things which we will be going for this metallography. Basically, it is the general behavior of the study of the metal. So we will be studying the general behavior of any of the metals and the alloys. As I told you, there are two types of the thing micro micro. What do you mean by the micro micro means whenever whatever the structure you are seeing under the microscope that is known as a micro examination. That means you are going for the more amount of the magnification. Microstructures, they are the required thing, microstructure for which the detailed study, for studying of the detailed structure, we will be going for the microstructure. And all the microstructures, they are always observed under the microscope. Optical microscopes are used for the resolutions for the wavelength and then we can go up to the many different levels. That means from a standard bench microscope to the metallurgical microscope, we can go up to the electron microscope. That means scanning electron microscope and transmission electron microscope. That means we can also study the electrons behavior up to that magnifications. We are having the different sorts of the microscopes. The second structure as we all know that is known as a macro structure, the structure which can be easily magnified or easily seen by our naked eyes that is known as a macro examination. The surface or the materials which is having a low magnification up to magnifying lens they are termed as a macro examination. It is useful for the information getting that whatever the surface disintegration is there or the shape change is there or any type of the dents or the scratches which are there on the surface can be viewed under the macro examination. So basically this was the metallography as I told you it deals with the structure. How we can observe the structure and for that observation there are two types that is micro examination and the macro examination and that things we will be studying in this particular thing. So now let us go in the detailed version of the macro examination. It is the method of examining a large region of the specimen of the structure and we can also study the fracture type of the thing that how the material have failed, how the fracture has been done under the naked eyes or the low magnification that is coming under the macro examination. Which details we are getting? We will get the macro segregation of the alloying elements means how they are aggregated, how they are con getting closer to each other in a particular material that we can come to know that is a macro segregation. Then we can come to know that is the large non-magnetic inclusion such as oxide, sulfide, slag that each and everything that can be also find out with the help of the macro examination. For forging flow lines means whatever the thing if the material has been prepared by the forging then whatever the flow lines can also be observed with this particular thing then comes the cast grain structure we can know physical defects such as gas pocket shrinkage cracks that each and everything can be find out with the help of the micro examination. 
so basically the micro examination is the thing which in our day to day life also we are seeing many things like we are also observing the screen of our mobile the cracks or the scratches which are there on the mobile that each and everything falls under the micro examination and the second type of the examination which comes that is known as a micro examination now what is that micro examination that is under a magnification of the microscope whatever things we are studying that is your micro examination it is very much important why because studying micro examination will gives you the information regarding the structure and the properties are directly dependent on it which informations we are getting that is the grain size shape how they are distributed then presence of the secondary phase means if any other phase is there we have studied we or we will be knowing about the different types of the phases which are there in the material that can be easily find out with the help of this micro examination then any other non metallic inclusion means any other non metals are present in the material can also be find out with the help of this micro examination segregations different types of the segregation at the micro level can also be find out with the help of the micro examination heterogeneous conditions how the heterogeneous mixture means more than one phase present uneven inside the material can also be find out with the help of the micro examination then history of the heat treatment which are done on the material can also be find out with the help of the micro examination now what is the general difference which is there between or which are observed between the micro and macro examination then let us discuss about the things that which are the different examinations or difference between micro macro it is done with the help of the naked eyes whereas it is observed under the microscope up to 15x magnification falls under the macro whereas from 20x to the many things that is 2000x we can go for the micro examination while studying large area is covered under the macro examination whereas uh, we can study only small surface region for that micro examination specimen preparation may or may not be required why because we are viewing by our eyes but a specimen preparation is always required in our micro examination skilled workers they are not required why because there is no such formality for seeing we are requiring a skills for viewing a material so no skilled worker required here skilled workers are required whereas surface crack blow hole surface roughness that each and everything can be find out with the macro examination whereas the structures information regarding structure inclusion phase that can be find out or the information can be get from the micro examination clear so this was the basic difference between micro and macro examination how they differ from each other now comes the second important topic that is known as an fracture now what do you mean by the term that is known as an fracture fracture means the how the material is totally getting fractured that means how it is going to get failed whenever a material gets worn out or if it is failing then how does it fails how much how does it get breaks away so that can be known with the help of the fracture basically it is defined as the separation of a body when when the separation is done that is under the particular stress under the stress into two or more parts then at a particular temperature below it then we can able to find out the fracture of the material then it is considered as the end result of the plastic deformation plastic deformation means when you take the material when you stretch the material one time will come it will break into two parts that how it breaks that comes under the fracture so it is caused by the physical and the chemical forces which are acting inside the material and it take place in two ways there is a two places that is crack initiation first the crack starts building inside it and then crack will propagate it will move further and eventually your material will fail so this is how the fracture works in the screen of the mobile also you might be knowing there that one crack will start or one crack will fall on the screen and that particular crack will propagate on the whole screen and your whole screen will get blown away so that is how the fracture of the material occurs two stages first crack initiation and the second stage will come that is known as an crack propagation clear so now let us move forward for the fracture that how many types of fracture are there there are two types of fracture which are possible one that is known as a ductile fracture and the second one that is known as a brittle fracture first we will be studying about the ductile fracture 
how does this ductile fracture occur first one the ductile fracture that is occurring in most of the metal this type of the fracture occurs excessive plastic or you can say intensive plastic deformations will get and ahead of the crack and crack is stable resist further and after that what will apply if you are applying steel load it will eventually fail so you can see over here if this is the material if we are applying the load on both the sides of the material what will happen whenever it is getting stretched up you can see there is a necking coming over here it will neck that means the surface will become not larger but it will get complexed so after that what will happen eventually small types of the cracks will start forming at the center of the thing where the necking occurs same way this minute crack will get with each other and what will happen they will try to form a crack and this crack will propagate in the direction over here you can see this crack will propagate and as a result your material will fail and this is how it fails it will be failing in the cup and cone type of the shape you can see over here the one part will be like this and the second part will be like this so it is one type of the cup and cone type of the crack or the fracture which is occurring second one as i told you that is the brittle fracture which will be occurring brittle fracture that is it is a character for the low plastic deformation ductile fracture was due to the high plastic or the more plastic deformation it will be a low plastic deformation and it will absorb low energy why because brittle material will directly fail it will not absorb more load so it will have a low energy absorption a crack which will be formed as a result of this pro brittle fracture it will propagate rapidly and due to that if some amount of stress is in increased what will happen it will eventually fail and the brittle crack is always perpendicular to the stress direction whichever direction crack is applying it will be always perpendicular to the force which we are applying so in here you can see if this is the thing this the shape of the material for the shape of the material this is the original sample brittle fracture you can see we are applying load in this direction over here so what will happen if we are applying load you can see the it will be always in the perpendicular direction and in this way it will fail whereas in the cup and cone type your ductile fracture will be failing so this is how the brittle fracture is occurring inside a material now let us go for the difference between the ductile and the brittle fracture how does it happen so ductile fracture if we are going occurs with large plastic deformation whereas as we have discussed it occurs with negligible plastic deformation because brittle material do not get plastically deformed crack propagation is low slow but here rapidly crack will propagate it occurs through the grains whereas it will follow the grain boundaries that is why they are occurring from the grain boundaries so it is rapid the failure is due to shear stress whereas here the failure is due to the axial stress ductile fracture they are characterized by cup and cone type as i told you cup and cone type it will be there in this type of the fracture will be there in the material whereas in the brittle fracture there is a normal perpendicular as we told you in this way the crack or the fracture will occur the tendency of ductile fracture is increased with dislocation on the other metal defect whereas it the tendency of brittle will be increased by the decreasing temperature and increasing the strain rate and the materials which will undergo ductile that are mild steel brass and all here glass ceramic they will go for the brittle fracture so these were the two different types of the fractures which are occurring inside the material okay so now let us go for the next topic that is the spark test what do you mean by the spark test sparks are the thing that means the sparks are generated when a metal metal will collide with each other as a result sparks will be generated why we are going for this this is the test for determining which type of the sample is there if you have been given any unidentified specimen then you are not knowing which specimen you are there if you are going for the spark test you can find out that the material is this that means for the detection of the material spark test are used clear so spark test the method of determining the general classification of the ferrous only ferrous materials can be easily classified or find out with the help of this test it is a reliable and inexpensive method for the knowing of the particular ferrous metals and all 
where we are using this we are using it in the many machine shop heat treatment shop foundries tool rooms we are applying this spark test over there then what is the method done for the conduction of this spark test firstly normally taking a piece of the metal usually scrap and what we are doing we are applying it on the grinding wheel so as a result what will happen your metal when reacts or whenever it is placed on a grinding wheel the sparks are emitted observe that sparks these sparks can be compared with the general sparks whatever the table is given to you and from that by comparing it we can classify the material that which material is there that can be find out spark test they are also used to sort the features of the material and differences between the spark can also be find out for the naming of the particular sample different types of the steels always give different types of the spark that means there are different types of the colors and different types of the sparks through which we can find out the material what are the advantages it is very quick and inexpensive test span samples do not have to be prepared why because from any of the scrap material we can go and we can find out the thing there is no need of the dark room or anything why because sparks can be easily find out from the daylight or any of the time we can find out this spark test or conduct it but there are disadvantages the main disadvantage is that means the materials inability to identify a material positively that means there are chances of getting mistake while getting it why because there are chances we cannot find out accurately that this will be that only because it is one of the trial and error method there can be a change in any of the sparks and all the colors or the type of the spark so that means it can mislead us so that is the major decision we cannot rely on it 100 percent for that material clear and the spark comparison also damages the material being tested whatever the testing we are doing that can be damaged while doing for the spark test so majorly advice we are always going for the scrap which is there so that our original sample is not harmed now which are the different types of the sparks and the color so the different types of the sparks which can be observed they are the fork shaft bird break arrow stream dashed and appendages and the colors which we can find out that are the orange white and yellow majorly this three colors and by distinguishing these different types we can find out the different types of the material so these are the different types of the spark stream many flow you can see in this thing shaft the straight lines from that a long straight lines which are coming fork over here you can see more things which are coming Springes also they are the shorter and the more type of the things which are coming out dashes they are in this type of the sparks which are there appendages it will move and it will tilt at the end you can see over here at the end there is a tilt is there and the bird break arrows bird break arrows that means at the end there is dash is there at the end there will be a dashes will be there so these are the different types of the sparks which are generated now let us see certain examples of the spark test which are there over here we can see the white cast iron will gives you this type of the spark each and every spark they are of different colors and different types of the thing this is stream white color you can see over here forks orange and white color so this is the way how we can contribute or how we can detect the material with the help of the spark test clear so we have discussed the different types of the structures that is micro macro examination we have gone for the fracture brittle ductile fracture and the spark test in this lecture so in the next lecture we will be going that how we can prepare a sample for the microscope analysis and the different sulfur printing phosphorus printing that we will be discussing in our upcoming lectures clear so till then thank you